Hi guys, I find interviews with so-called average voters extremely insightful, but at the same time, deeply frustrating. So Sophie Reach of Sky News was in Grimsby where she spoke to people in the town ahead of the local elections, and she interviewed one lady called Sarah. Sarah is in her 20s, so it's unlikely she voted in the Brexit referendum in 2016, but she did back the Conservatives in 2019. Why? Well, it seems she wanted small government and something done about immigration. This is where it gets frustrating. Sarah, good to talk to you. Uh, Sarah, you voted Conservative in 2019, didn't yes. you? And you said the economy is something that matters to you, uh, and also immigration. Do you want to just talk a bit you about know, that? You know, I think Ronald Reagan said it best, and my most terrifying words in the English, in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help, which I think is basically what most people think about the intervention of either a Labour or a Conservative government. If you look at the levels of spending in the North, versus London. Now, Labour has been in power in the North, the majority North, for decades. They've done nothing. The Conservatives have been... Wait, wait a minute. Do you understand that money spent in the North comes from central government, from Westminster? So if devolved administrations in the North of England don't have enough money, part of the reason, or the main reason, is because they're not receiving enough from central government or that they're not allowed to raise money because of the rules set by central government. So if the North is not doing very well, you can't really blame the mayors or the councils that are run by Labour. And of course, there are some Tory-run councils, but you can't blame the councillors if if their hands are tied when it comes to how much money they can raise and how much money they're receiving from central government. In power in some form of the other since 2010, They've done nothing. In a town like Grimsby, if I get the opportunity, I want to leave. And it's a shame, really, because, you know, my family is from here. I've lived most of my life here. So shouldn't places like Grimsby be a draw for young people, especially when you look at the housing prices in, say, London? I'm not saying Grimsby house prices aren't, you know, rising as well. But you think that people should want to go to places like this instead of, you know... Just, yeah. I'm really interested in that because you, you say that if you get the opportunity to leave Grimsby, you will. I think you're, you're in your 20s, aren't you? Yes. Mid 20s, you're living with your parents, you're yeah. a remote worker. Yeah. But if you got a job elsewhere, you'd, you'd be off. Yeah, somewhere like, you know, Leeds, and um, we just went to Liverpool in February, and that's an absolutely wonderful city. You know, obviously, you can't compare its apples and oranges. But when you look at Grimsby, yeah, they say they're going to build a new cinema. Who goes to the cinema anymore? It's expensive. People watch it on Netflix. The town centre, it's vape shops or barbers or charity shops. There's no big shops. I mean, again, I can understand they say the rates here are high, but that's the thing about Grimsby. No one does care about us. And at the end of the day, you can vote for any politician. But when they start caring about us, maybe we'll care back. I mean, it's pretty... So you want the government to get involved. Because at the beginning, you quoted Ronald Reagan, who said, you know, the problem is government. We want to get government out of people's businesses, out of people's lives. But you're talking about problems that can only really be fixed by government, not by private enterprise. You know, you're very eloquent in how you put a lot of these things. Um, What could the women here do to make you want to stay in Grimsby? What would make you want to stay in this area? Um, First, I think we need a more diverse economy. Also, they talk about offshore wind farming, which I think is a good start. Obviously, we used to have the fishing, now that's no longer... We need a diversified. We need retail. We need... You know, we don't really have manufacturing anymore in this country, but a more diverse, especially for young people, young people, especially university educated, that don't want to be working in factories, and that's not putting our nose up at people who do that hard work. It's young people saying, you know, we've got a degree in X, Y and Z. We want to use that or be in a certain economy. Um, The reason she said in 2019 she voted for the Conservatives was because of the economy. That's not working out too well. And immigration. And she just said, look, I'm not attacking this voter here. Okay, let me be clear. I'm attacking the, the... the message that is coming out from the media that is convincing this voter to vote for the likes of Boris Johnson or the Conservatives. So she said immigration. And she said also, well, I don't want to do manual work. I don't want to do the types of jobs that don't pay very well. Well, if you don't want to do it and other young people don't want to do it, then who is going to do it? 
because the government, the Tories and the right wing are saying, well, what we need to do is encourage British people to do these low paid jobs. Or what we can do is convince the companies, farmers, industry, hospitality to pay higher wages, which will drive up their prices, their costs and their prices. So which way do you want it? Young people don't want to do these jobs. This is not a criticism directed at young people. They just don't want to do these jobs. They've become qualified. They spent years in university, getting into debt in some cases. And they'd like a job that pays well. And they don't want to do a low-paying manual job. But somebody has to do these jobs. So she voted in 2019 to reduce immigration, I believe. But she doesn't want to do the jobs that, well, immigrants are ending up doing. So which way do you want it? Once again, I'm not directing my criticism at the voter and criticizing the media and politicians who put these ideas in our head. The idea that you can have a great job, you can go to university, um, and we can also bring down immigration because we don't need all these people coming into the country to do these jobs. We get British people to do them. But what British people? We've seen the result of that. And... The idea that government is the problem. No, government is the solution. You know, the Tories have relied on privatization over the last number of decades, and we've seen the result of that. Look at the water. Look at the trains. Pretty much anything that's been privatized is a disaster. Now, that's not an argument against privatization. It's an argument against how the Tories do privatization. But generally, if, if, if it's things like healthcare or water... If it's privatized, it's going to be profit-driven. And of course, these companies are going to cut costs. The way to resolve that is to nationalize it or to bring in massive levels of regulation. But the Tories are against that. Ronald Reagan was against that. So once again, I don't like the... Look, please don't take this as a criticism against the voter and criticizing the policies that the Tories are pushing and the narrative that the Tories are pushing. The idea that... We can reduce immigration while growing the economy. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can't. You need immigrants. You need people to do the low-paying jobs if you want to grow the economy. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.